Good evening to you. More than half a million passenger journeys have been affected as the walkout by drivers on southern trains heads into its second day. More than 2,000 services stopped running and more than 200 stations had no service. It's the first strike by drivers following months of action by the guards causing chaos and misery for rail passengers. Mike Pearce reports. One of the few trains that did run on the Brighton line today packed with commuters who said they had no alternative but to try to get to London. Only Thameslink services were operating with all others cancelled, affecting hundreds of thousands of passengers. Total and utter disgust. I mean, it's been impossible. It's a, it's a nightmare, really. Um, this week I'm actually going to stay in London for the rest of the week because it's, otherwise I just don't know if I'll be able to get home. I've got to get to work. So I have to get up early, get the nanny in early and hope I can get home. <laughs> it's very, very difficult, but we hope everything will be sorted. With over 2,000 services cancelled, most stations and tracks were deserted in the worst rail disruption for decades. I'm on the cusp of giving up my job, on the cusp, because of this, every single day. And next week, Christmas week, I'm having a laugh. I worked overnight at the university library um, on my dissertation and I went to the station at about half five this morning feeling a bit dreary um, and there was no trains. The destination for drivers was the picket line. They opposed the move to driver only operation which has been on many trains since the 1980s. It's about people realistically listening to our concerns which they failed to do for the last 12 months. Isn't the reality you've allowed driver only operation for the last 20 years, so it's a bit tough now to say to people we don't want it. Well, I have to say 20 years ago, if with hindsight, we might not have done what we did. But the reality back then was there were shorter trains, we didn't have the level of footfall we have now, as becoming, in our view, increasingly unsafe with the numbers we're carrying. It's gone on for nine months for passengers, it's inconceivable, it's unacceptable, it is not on. OK, for passengers it has been um, nine months of industrial relations which has undermined our ability to be able to operate a reliable service which you know I totally recognize from our passengers and ourselves is really frustrating and unacceptable and this is why we're they saying we need to do something about it and now not not all this talk so this is why we're saying to Aslef look striking is not the solution to the problem here at Victoria the empty destination boards told the story only half the usual Gatwick Express service was running with a queuing system in place to stop platforms and trains becoming too crowded Passenger groups now plan a march on Thursday to the Department for Transport to vent their anger. People have got incredibly frustrated. They are literally at breaking point and that's why we're going down to the Department for Transport on Thursday uh, following a protest in Victoria. Because right now we need the Department for Transport to intervene in this dispute and we need them to sort out the current situation. Meanwhile, the disruption continues tomorrow. Mike Pearce there with that report. Well, tonight it's been announced that uh, meetings will take place at ACAS tomorrow to try to resolve the dispute. Our reporter Andy Dickinson's been meeting frustrated rail passengers who took to the buses to try to get to work. Commuters mixed with tourists boarding the 6.25 to London. But this is no holiday. Instead, a three-hour journey into work for passengers enduring their 23rd day of rail strike. I think eventually people are going to start smashing things, or people, or... I mean, last night I saw a guy, when the train we'd been sitting on for 10 minutes, we suddenly got told we had to wait for a driver. He got off the train and he went and sort of smashed his fist into something as he walked past, because he was just that angry, and, and that's how we're all getting. We just want to, you know, because nobody seems to be doing anything. More than 600,000 journeys are taken on Southern every day, yet this morning passengers have been forced to use alternatives, whether driving, using other networks, or coaches like this one or else staying at home. I used to commute up to London for 19 years, and earlier this year I was offered a job nearer to Gatwick, and I took it and took the salary hit to, for my sanity. So yeah, it's, it's changed my life. I've had to change my life because of it. People just want to get to work and home again and I've, I've seen quite a lot of people trying to be calm and not lose their temper but I mean there's going to be, I think there's going to be a riot at some time to be honest, it's, it's, it's disgraceful. 
Some of these commuters will now remain in the capital, even paying for hotels, in the hope of avoiding further chaos this week. The concourses they've left behind empty, the roads ahead clogged, their spirits all but broken. Andy Dickinson, ITV News. In other news, an inquest has heard how a six-year-old girl was drowned in the bath by her father, who then hanged himself. Kezia Flux Edmonds was found at her home in East Cowes on the Isle of Wight in June. Her father, Darren Flux Edmonds, had been suffering from depression. The coroner recorded a verdict of unlawful killing. The NHS is failing to learn from patient deaths and letting down grieving families. That is the damning verdict from a year-long report commissioned by the government. The investigation was sparked by the death of 18-year-old Connor Sparrowhawk, who drowned while under the care of Southern Health. There'll be a new national standard into how deaths are investigated. A former children's doctor from Salisbury has been convicted of 14 counts of indecent assault. Michael Salmon, who's 81, carried out the offences during the 1970s and 80s. He is already serving an 18-year jail sentence for similar offences against patients. Eleven valuable paintings of tigers, elephants and leopards have been stolen from a zoo in Hampshire. The works were by wildlife painter Pip McGarry, who's been artist-in-residence at Marwell Zoo near Winchester for 17 years. They're worth more than £160,000. Richard Jones reports. Professional painter Pip McGarry has been artist-in-residence at Marwell since 1999 and his work is on display at the zoo's gift shop. It was from there that 11 of his paintings were stolen late on December the 8th or early the following day. It seems thieves targeted the most valuable, including this painting of a snow leopard with a price tag of £36,000. I'm really sad and shocked, um, but I'm also astonished that these individuals have gone to such lengths to steal my paintings when they're going to be so difficult to sell at auction or in galleries or on eBay without being rumbled. Added to which, who wants a stolen painting on their wall? They could be co considered complicit in the crime, they could have it confiscated without having any remuneration. Hampshire police want to hear from anyone who knows about the theft or has been offered any of the paintings. Marwell says it could suffer if the work isn't recovered because a significant proportion of every sale of Pip's work goes to support its conservation projects. Richard Jones, ITV News. A senior Isle of Wight councillor has appeared in court charged with drink driving. Councillor Phil Jordan stepped down from the council executive saying he made a mistake, a miscalculation and an error of judgement. He's been banned from driving for 20 months. A 20-year-old woman had a lucky escape after her car crashed off the A35 and was submerged in water. It happened on the Redbridge Causeway. The driver managed to get out of the vehicle but suffered minor injuries. Three of our football teams in action tonight in the Premier League. Bournemouth move up to eighth after a fine 1-0 home win over Leicester. Mark Pugh got the important goal. In the Championship, Brighton won 3-2 at Blackburn to go one point behind the leaders Newcastle. Goals from Duffy, Stevens, and Murray. And wonderful non-league Eastleer into the third round of the FA Cup after a 2-0 win at Halifax in a second round replay. Eastleer away at Brentford in round three. Great results all round. Will we get a good result on the weather? Let's find out. Here's Simon Parkin. From sleet to the slopes, driving through Europe. Euro Tunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Good evening, and if you don't mind a bit of gloom, then you're in luck because there's more of that to look forward to tomorrow. Mind you, today started gloomy and stayed gloomy. Tomorrow is going to start gloomy and then it will brighten up with some very decent sunny spells come the afternoon. Just at the minute, we've got high pressure out to the east of us and we've got low pressure to the west trying to win the battle. But you can see the weather fronts kind of get killed off by that high pressure before they cause us any mischief. So things will stay relatively settled over the next few days, but there will be a fair 
fair bit of cloud at times. Certainly overnight tonight, it's generally overcast. There's mist and murk again, particularly over the higher ground, but it's mild with temperatures for some of us up into double figures. And yes, it will be another grey start tomorrow, but the mist is going to lift and the cloud is going to break up quite nicely from the south. That's because we've got drier air coming through and that means more blue sky on offer. Some very fine sunshine come the afternoon. Temperatures down slightly on today's values, peaking at around 11 degrees. That's a degree or so cooler than it was today, but with the added bonus of some decent sunshine and the wind staying light, gusts of around 15 miles an hour along the coast. You shouldn't actually feel too bad if you're outside. Euro Tunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Some decent sunshine. How wonderful. That's how we're looking this evening. We're back during Good Morning Britain from 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Join us for that. But from the late team for now, it is good night. Sleep well. Join us again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.